Mina, konnichiwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Since I don't use konnichiwa a ton, that means, basically means good afternoon, or Mina, everyone, konnichiwa, good afternoon. Usually I um, do this in the morning or the evening, and today, uh, it's the afternoon, because that's just kind of how it happened. So, we've got 2 Chronicles chapter 22, we're going to start in verse 2. Ahaziah was 42 years old when he became king, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. Not a very long time. His mother's name was Athalia, the granddaughter of Omri. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother advised him to do wickedly. Therefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab, for they were his counselors after the death of his father, to his destruction. He also followed their advice, and went with Jehoram the son of Ahab, king of Israel, to war against Hazael king of Syria at Ramoth Gilead. And the Syrians wounded Joram. So... All of those things right there to say you have sometimes people in your life sometimes well attention sometimes not so much and the advice they give is just plain bad it's just it's gonna lead down a dark path even if it looks good even if it sounds good it's not good um, the general rule to follow would be the rule from the book of James where there's godly wisdom juxtaposed to devilish or worldly wisdom. Now, I'm not going to tell you what the verse is. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of homework here. Yes, I'm actually requesting my audience to do just a little bit of study and a little bit of research on their own. And I have no regrets there whatsoever. It's not the most popular thing in the world, but doing a little bit of thinking for yourself and just a tiny bit of research is a very good thing. And I've given you all the hints you need, and you're on the Internet and you have Google. So you have all the tools at your disposal that you need to look that up. Generally speaking, well actually definitely speaking, point number one, if someone gives you advice contrary to the Word of God, like I don't care what it is, if you know like, hey man, you know, let's go get high, or hey man, let's go get drunk, or hey man, there are like three women in there that want to do it, let's go. You hear advice like that that just plainly contradicts what the Word of God would tell you to do, you don't do it. Whatever the sin may be, if someone advises you, hey, do this sin, whatever it is, it's not a good idea, God does see it, you will be punished, don't do it. Now, for the more general area, things that aren't specifically mentioned in the Word of God, if someone advises you, you know, steal, rape, murder, those are very, very bad ideas. If someone tells you that maybe someone needs to be knocked down a peg or two, if someone tells you that someone else probably deserves the gossip or the insults they're getting, if someone tells you that, you know, just take advantage of this one opportunity, it's not necessarily illegal or immoral, but, you know, if a few people get hurt or a little bit insulted along the way, who cares? This is a good opportunity. You should take it. Whenever the opportunity is for selfish gain and whatever that opportunity is going to hurt people I won't automatically say don't do it this is bad, a bad idea but I would say a vast majority of the time that kind of advice is worldly that kind of advice is demonic and is not of God you don't want to take advantage of people you don't want to do things just to satisfy yourself or to take advantage of the situation or to take advantage of someone else. A lot of the time, vast majority of the time, even if you can't find a verse in scripture to say, hey, this is wrong, nine times out of 10, those are bad ideas. And I would say, if you're gonna do something along those lines, and it's not clear cut, but it's, it's still along those lines, and someone's probably gonna get hurt, all I can say at that point is there are times when you have to make a tough call. At that time, ask God for judgment. Ask Him what He wants to do. Ask Him what you should do. And find someone who's going to give you godly wisdom and godly advice. Like we read in this verse, sometimes, not always, but sometimes parents actually don't give good advice. And a lot of you are probably thinking, oh wow, shocker there. <laughs> parents are a lot smarter than we generally think they are. They generally... They've lived life a lot longer than us, and they generally have a good chunk of knowledge and wisdom on their side that we younger ones simply do not have. And there are also times, though, 
when the advice is given, even from a, a parental figure, a mentor, someone we look up to, it contradicts the word of God, it takes advantage of someone or the situation, and despite their best intent to try to help you, and they really think they're giving you good advice, if it contradicts the word of God, or it goes against the general those general principles of taking advantage of a situation, taking advantage of a person, sometimes you will have to reject the advice of someone you care about, reject the advice of someone you love. Don't be afraid to do that. It's much more important to follow God and your heart than to follow the advice of someone you love and even trust. Follow after God and follow after your heart. Some t and, and one last word of counsel, sometimes your heart can deceive you. If you're receiving godly advice from a godly person and your heart contradicts it, under those circumstances, you're probably the one that's at fault. You're probably the one who actually needs to decide against their heart. For remember, the heart is desperately wicked above all things. And who can know it? The Lord, He judges and looks on the hearts of man. So, we can't always trust our hearts. Sometimes, it'll be godly advice that goes against what we selfishly, sinfully want to do. And at those times, we need to put our selfish desires right on the cross, nail them to it, and follow the godly advice we're given. This isn't a clear-cut thing. It's not like a very definite, here it is, unless it's right there in the Word of God. And a lot of the times, counsel and wisdom don't involve direct scriptures. So at that time, the best thing that we can have is a relationship with God and a heart that desires to do His will. That is going to be your very best protection against any and all counsel or completely for counsel. Whether it's for you, against someone else, in regards to Scripture, in regards to God's calling in your life, you wanting God's best, you pursuing God's heart, and you walking in the love of God. Those are going to be your best defense overall against ungodly advice. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.